Welcome back to AlgaJS. Today's question is leak code 152, maximum product subarray. So we're given an array nums. Find a contiguous non-empty subarray with the array that has the largest product and return that product. A subarray is a contiguous sequence of the array. So contiguous sequence follows one after the other. So in example one, the maximum product we can achieve from this is six. So it's two times three. And then in example two, the maximum product is zero because any other solutions are either negative or zero. So as soon as this question is asking for a maximum, we can start by looking at dynamic programming. And what makes this problem slightly more difficult is the array contains negative values. So what are the ways that we can generate a maximum from any of these values? Well, we can have the current value by itself. We can have a positive times a positive, or we can have a negative times a negative. One of these will generate the maximum. With dynamic programming, we're going to have to keep track of the maximum, and we're going to have to keep track of the minimum. So if we have a variable called prev max and prev min, and we initialize both of them to the value at index of zero, so two and two, and then we have a res which is equal to two to begin with because this is a valid option. Then we can loop through this array and build out from this information here. So if we start at index one, what is the current max? Well, the current max can either be three, so it can be the current value. It can be the current value times the previous max, so both positives. So three times two, which is equal to six, or it could be negative times negative, right? So we don't have any negatives here. So we can say that the maximum from this is going to be six, which is three times two. Then we need to have the current minimum. So what is the current minimum at this position? Well, it can be the current value, which is three, or it can be the current value times the previous max or the current value times the previous minimum, right? So the previous max and previous min at this point in time are the same. So the value we're gonna to add to current min is going to be three. Now, if we update the previous max and the previous min, with these values, six and three, we can now update the results. Okay, so we've updated the results to the maximum between the previous result, which was two, and this max here. Then we rinse and repeat. So if we go to minus two, what's the maximum we can get from this? Well, it's minus two, the current value, or minus two times three. So the maximum between those two is minus two. The minimum is going to be the minus value times the largest positive value. So that's going to be minus six. Then we update these values, minus two, minus six. Obviously, minus two is not greater than six. So we move along. So at four, what is the current max we can get? Well, it'll be the current value, so the value of four, or it'll be four times the previous max, which is minus two, so that'd be minus eight, or it'll be four times the previous min, which is minus six. So the maximum from this is going to be four. Likewise, for the current min, it's either the current value or the current value times the previous max or the current value times the previous minimum. So the current min will be four times minus six, which is equal to minus 24. So if we update prev max, and prev min, then we can update results. So we compare results to the current max. Result is still greater than current max. So we carry on. Now we're outside the loop. We can just return this as our result. And as you can see by using dynamic programming, we've simplified the solution from say the time complexity of O n squared, if we had to loop through each and every possible solution to O of n, because we're only iterating over this array exactly once. So let's start off by creating our prev min, prev max, and our result variable. Then if we loop through from index of one up to the end of nums.length, we work out the current max and the current min. So current max is equal to the maximum between nums at i, so the current value, the current value times the previous max or the current value times the previous min. Likewise for current min, it's just going to be the same, but looking for the minimum. So nums at i, current value, the current value times previous min, previous max, sorry, or the current value times previous min. Once we've generated those, we can update prev max to equal current max and prev min to equal current min. And seeing as we still have access to the current max, we can update result. So that'll be the maximum between our current result and current max. And then return result. Let's run it. And there you go. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. It really helps out with the channel.
and I'll see you in the next one.